Welcome back to National Report. Just days away from the first debate between former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris. It's going to be hosted by ABC News at the National Constitution Center in Philly. There was a lot of back and forth over the rules, and it appears Harris is still not happy with the final results. I'll talk a lot of it is all about this microphone deal, believe it or not. Harris saying Saturday night, Donald Trump is surrendering to his advisors who won't allow him to debate with a live microphone. If his own team doesn't have confidence in him, the American people definitely can't. We are running for president of the United States. Let's debate in a transparent way with the microphones on the whole time. Now, the rules agreed upon that the microphones would be muted when the candidate is not speaking. Caroline Sunshine is joining us, the Trump 2024 Deputy Director of Communications. Caroline, always great to see you. And again, thanks for taking the time here on this on this holiday. Um, a lot of news to still get to. And we're going to we're going to get to those moments, but let's stay on the debate. Why is it that VP Harris is is still complaining about the microphones? If we understand this correctly, the, the mute mic situation came from when President Biden debated Trump. Well, it probably has something to do with that CNN interview she gave, where it was very clear that she is not good without a teleprompter in front of her. Look, there's no question about President Trump's debate skills. He's ready for this debate. He's said his whole life is preparation for this debate. He's ready to debate any place, anywhere, anytime. As we saw the last time President Trump was on a debate stage with the Democrat nominee, they ended up having to drop out of the race for president. I expect President Trump might have the uh, honor of defeating not just one, but two Democrat nominees in one election year. But look, this is what we've seen a pattern from, from Kamala Harris. She hides, she ducks, she tries to change the rules because she herself actually knows she's not qualified to be president of the United States. And she's afraid to face the voters and she's afraid to show up to this debate. And she should be, because when you see that CNN interview, when you see the fact that she's continued to, to duck questions from the media, when you see the campaign she's running with the basement strategy, you know exactly why she's afraid to debate President Trump. When you were watching the CNN interview, was there something that, that stood out to you or to the Trump campaign as perhaps uh, a point of weakness in particular? Uh, that Donald Trump could seek to highlight in the debate? The entire thing. Frankly, there's many observations about that interview, but the one I take away most from it is that this is not a woman who is equipped to be commander in chief. When you watch that interview, it is very clear this is not a woman who would be capable of sitting down with Xi Jinping, Vladimir Putin, leaders of Iran. This is not somebody capable of representing the United States of America on the world stage. In fact, it's why you have already seen these Israeli hostages, one of them being an American citizen, killed under, let's not forget, Kamala Harris is the sitting current vice president of the United States. And we know Joe Biden isn't running the ship. So that blood is on her hands. This is a failure of leadership that was 100% on Kamala Harris's hands. Same thing as we watched these gold star families that Kamala Harris abandoned. First of all, she was the last person in the room during the Afghanistan withdrawal. Notice how she wasn't asked about that very much in that interview. She was the last person in the room, said it was a great decision, stood by it. Well, that decision resulted in the loss of lives of 13 U.S. service members who are no longer with us. And Kamala Harris and her campaign had the audacity just a couple of days ago to attack President Trump for spending time with those families on the anniversary of their deaths. Meanwhile, let me remind you of the facts, and she will be reminded of those facts on that debate stage. Kamala Harris was the last person in the room during that withdrawal. She has never said the names of those 13 U.S. service members. She's never met their families. She was never there at that dignified transfer. Chris, Kristen Welker lied about that during her interview, has since corrected it. But let's be very clear. Kamala Harris is a weak, failed leader who is not equipped to be president of the United States or commander-in-chief of the greatest military in the world. And you will see that contrast on that debate stage.